Hi there, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. Today we have a fabulous fun project to share with you. We are gonna be repurposing an old drawer to become an underbed storage unit. So the history on this piece is I repurposed a dresser and I took out four of the drawers to create more of an open space for baskets. And now I gotta figure out what to do with all the drawers. So let's get started and have some fun today. Okay, I'm just gonna keep you up to date or get you up to date, I should say, on where I am. I took it outside because we don't sand inside here and sanded everything down and discovered it's probably not the best piece of furniture, but it's gonna work great for what I'm gonna repurpose it for. Um, I'm planning on putting two poles on here. So I filled the original holes that the hardware was in um, with some wood putty just to get rid of them. And then I've decided I'm gonna take my um, texture medium and we are going to trowel that over the front of this and use a fun roller on it. So, um, I'm just finishing taping off because I want to make sure that I keep the texture medium on the top flat area, okay? If it gets down into this groove, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, I'll just clean it up. So I've taken some of the texture medium out of the bucket, okay? And this is, um, it's fluffy. It's a really, really easy product to work with and trowel with. And I'm using what's called a little mini trowel, okay? The little baby trowel. So I am just gonna trowel this over the flat area. Uh, if you don't have a trowel, don't worry. If you have a, um, a putty knife, a spatula, um, an old room key, there's many ways you can get this product on here. You can even use um, a chip brush, okay, which I'm gonna show you guys. And I'm gonna quit holding that plate because I got it on styrofoam, but boy, can you hear that styrofoam, okay? That's kind of noisy. Um, so that's better, okay? Um, you can also just use the chip brush, which I'm showing you here, okay? This will also get it across the surface for you. The wonderful thing about using the texture medium with the rollers is it doesn't have to be on there too thick. And if I am using a chip brush, brush like I am doing right now, it's gonna create more, um, I would have like a striate finish in the background, but that's okay. That's just gonna add some extra interest to the whole overall finish. Okay, so I'm just brushing it on. Trying not to get it too thick, but I gotta get enough product here to have something for the roller to imprint into. And like I said, I'm not worried about getting it into that recessed area because I'll come clean that out with either using um, cotton swabs um, or uh, just an artist brush, okay? So I'm not gonna worry about getting, you know, that I'm getting it down in there, okay? Okay, and I think we're probably good enough, okay? Um, did I tell you that somewhere between an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch is all you need? So it's not a lot. Um, I was just trying to thin out a couple of areas where I think I've got it too thick. I'm grabbing one of my rollers. This is called the chrysanthemum pattern. And just always spin it first, make sure it's spinning pretty good. And then, this is gonna be a little challenging in this direction, but I'm gonna do my best. Okay, I'm gonna kind of move the drawer a little bit. But all I'm gonna do is just roll across the surface and the pattern of the roller is creating an imprint into the texture medium. So I don't know about you, but that came out really cool. So the next thing we have to do is just let this sit and dry, and then we're gonna come back and prime everything and get to the next fun spot, okay? Okay, we're coming in for a close-up because I want you guys to see the texture that I created with the chip brush and how cool that really looks. So the texture medium has finally dried. Um, we took this outside and I sanded off all the high points. So when you're rolling through the texture medium with the roller, it tends to peak the edges of the design. So you just wanna go back with, um, I think I grabbed maybe like a 220, 120, and just lightly sand it just to get all those highs down. Now you're not gonna lose your design um, and you're still gonna have um, some texture left behind, but at least it's smooth, okay? And now I'm just gonna pull off my tape. This has all been cleaned off and sand it. Uh, so 
we are ready to um, go ahead and put our paint on. And didn't that come out so awesome? I am absolutely thrilled with this. Uh, so I'm gonna be using um, DIY paint by Debbie's Design Diary, um, but I'm using, um, what was this, Old 57 and Mermaid Tail are the two colors that I wanna play with. So I'm gonna start off with Old 57, and I'm just gonna get this basically on here, and then I wanna come back and do some blending in with the Mermaid Tail. Um, so this is, um, this is a chalk paint, okay? And it has some properties that you can't normally get out of working with an acrylic or a latex paint on being able to come back and do some distressing. Uh, so it really is a, a fun material to work with. And let's see if my paint cans here are gonna work good enough so that I can get all sides of this front of the drawer. Uh, so when I do this, we're almost gonna start to feel like we're losing um, a little bit of the design, but I'm gonna come back and do a distressing technique on it when it's all dry and bring our pattern back. Um, so the rollers can be used with texture like I've done, which gives us a three-dimensional look, and they can also be done with, um, with paint. So there's quite a few different techniques that you can do with the rollers. Um, so if your paints get feel like they're getting too dry, you can always use like a little water mister. Um, it's a great tool here, okay? And just kind of mist a little bit so that you can brush things out a little bit smoother. That also is great when you are doing some blending, um, which is wonderful. And you guys remember, I didn't tape off this recessed area, so I just cleaned that out with a paintbrush and then I just made sure that when I came back and I was sanding that I sanded off any um, rough edges around that recessed area and it saved me a lot of time trying to figure out how to um, tape that off okay that's just a hard area to try to tape off okay, I might have to critique the bottom of this drawer when I'm when I'm done there um, okay so we've got our first color on here that was pretty cool. Um, and now, this can's just a little big, okay, but I'm gonna dirty brush, okay? I'm gonna basically put some of it out on this. This is like my serving tray, you guys. I love this thing. I line it with press and seal, and that way I've got a great surface to just um, load my paint colors onto. Okay, so I am just going to brush over what I've already done. I'm gonna use a light mist of some water and just let these colors blend together kind of wherever they may and just get a beautiful blending of the two of them together. And I like using colors that have some strong contrast as these do because um, I think it makes a little bit more of a statement when I do some color blending. So this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be a little bit more contrast, okay? but you can see how well these paints blend and how fun that is just to allow your colors just to kind of blend into each other. So this is totally wet into wet, okay? I didn't wait for anything to dry. And I find that if I'm working with um, a chalk paint, this particular brand, I, sh I shouldn't say it goes for all brands, okay? But when I'm working with this particular brand, um, I just got to get that can out of my way. That's just a thick can. Um, it works best if I'm blending, if I'm doing wet into wet, okay? There are times I might use several colors and I'll let one color dry first, uh, but this is definitely a technique for uh, blending while everything is wet. And that way the colors just kind of become one and their transition from one to the other is soft and smooth. Um, if you ever find that you feel like you got too much of one color, you could always go back and add a little bit of the first, okay? So if I feel like I got too dark down here, I can dip back into my old 57 and I can brush that on as well and blend that back in. 
So just kind of play with your colors, have fun with it, okay? Now, I'm gonna have to let this completely dry and then we're gonna come back and do some distressing to this as well as, because this is going to be um, a cute little storage to go underneath your bed, I'm gonna paint the entire inside of it black and even add a foil. So we'll be back as soon as this dries. While our paint is finally dry, which didn't take too long, and we've got this gorgeous blended um, finish, um, and it looks, those colors look beautiful together. Again, don't forget, you can um, just click on the materials list and get the whole list of products that I'm using, colors and everything. So the next thing I wanna do is just stress this, okay? I wanna bring my pattern back as well. So that great water mister bottle that we showed you earlier, okay, this is wonderful. Um, this is cheesecloth, okay? Uh, it comes on a bolt and it's already like pre-cut into these size pieces. I normally grab a couple of those and create like a pad and then I can spray my um, cheesecloth as well as I can mist my surface because this just kind of makes it go faster than having to be real patient. Okay, this is for the impatient person when you're distressing. Uh, now I'm gonna rub back and I'm gonna rub over the design because when I do that, it still has some high edges, which is going to allow me to expose the texture medium that's underneath. And the texture medium was the product that I brushed on and we rolled the roller through. So I'm just bringing, bringing that texture medium back up a little bit. And it's still, even though the texture medium is like a, white, it's still going to look good with the colors because um, I'm just bringing a little bit back. So I just kind of highlight it here and there. So I'm going to bring my design back and then we're probably going to come in here and maybe just bring a little bit of the dark wood color back through randomly on the edges just to kind of give that uh, distressed look. And, you know, this is truly uh, a personal preference, okay? I'm trying to stay out of the camera as I'm doing this. We're having a hard time finding an angle that works great um, <laughs> with this. Um, and Michelle keeps moving the camera around uh, for me to help me get some better angles here, you guys. Um, but distressing a finish like this, I always say is a personal preference. Some people like a lot of distress. Some people just like a little bit. If you don't want to distress the edges and bring back um, the wood tone underneath like I've done, you don't have to. Now, as your cheesecloth gets covered with a lot of paint, you might have to flip over to a clean section because it seems to always work a little bit better when it's just a clean piece. That way it can pull that paint back off around your design and bring that back to life. Now, as chalk paint gets wet, it's going to go darker again, but it'll come back and dry lighter once at the end, okay? So I'm just going to continue to distress this. Uh, I love repurposing, and I've been repurposing for years. I was dumpster diving before dumpster diving was even, oh, I don't even know if they called it dumpster. Well, maybe we did call it dumpster diving now, but uh, there's some of the terminology that has come up like upcycling. I don't think upcycling was a word or a phrase that we used to use back when we did this years and years ago, but I love being able to take some of my old projects and pieces from them. Like I was telling you in the beginning, this, um, this drawer was part of the dresser that I repurposed for my house and turned it into, um, it's basically a stand for the TV, but I want it more of an open space and to use baskets. So I took out the bottom four drawers and this is one of the four. So I'm just kind of distressing a little bit here and there, wherever I might want to see a little bit of the wood tone. If I want to see more of the roller pattern, the chrysanthemum coming back and can just keep playing around with this. This is so much fun to do. If you guys have never worked with this paint, again, this is the DIY paint by Debbie's Design Diary. It is so much fun to do. Okay, all I'm using is cheesecloth and water, 
and I'm doing all that distressing. Okay. So that's, what's really cool about a uh, real true chalk paint that you can distress with just water and cloth. Okay. So I think I'm okay with that. And you know, the great thing is that once that dries, if I want to distress some more, if I decide I want to bring back more of the design somewhere, I can always play with it again later. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Bondego black and I'm going to paint the whole rest of the drawer. So we are going to paint the inside of it. We're going to paint the outside of it. Um, we're going to paint the sides. We're going to paint all of it other than I'm probably not going to paint the bottom. Okay, but we're going to get to painting on this. So this is not going to be the exciting part, but we're just going to get started. Uh, my Bondego is a paint and primer all in one. So it is going to give me great coverage. And we are, well, I am painting this black because I'm intending on um, doing some foiling, okay? So I really want this to be a cute piece that when somebody is using the storage unit, and we're gonna use this for extra blankets um, to go into the guest room. Um, if they pull this out, I want it to be such a cute piece that they're going to just fall in love with it. Um, and I'm thinking we're going to have to use a little bit of foil on at least part of this. So I'm not going to make you guys watch the boring, boring part, but I'm going to get this completely covered in black paint and I'll come back for the fun part. So I finished all the painting. We've got our distressing on the front. And as you can see, I've painted everything else black. And we're gonna get this um, little storage drawer finished off. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wax. Okay, I decided to do a wax finish because I thought I hadn't done one of these in a while. And um, I'm first gonna use clear wax. Okay, so I'm using the um, Debbie's Design Diary wax, the clear wax to start with. And then we're gonna come back with um, the black wax, okay? And I like to use just cheesecloth again. I love this stuff, you're gonna find that out. But the only place that's gonna be maybe a little tricky is down in that groove, but I still think I can even get it in there with just the cheesecloth. Um, to me, this just seems so easy just to wipe on um, and wax the whole surface. Now, if you're waxing with multiple colors, um, because I want to start off with the clear and to come back and do the black wax over the top. Um, always, <laughs> I'll just give you a little advice. Use your clear wax first because if you go directly on with black wax, it might get too dark too fast for you, okay? Um, so if you put your clear wax on first, you're going to have control with your other waxes. So if you decided to use a white wax, a brown wax, um, black wax, any of them, you're going to have way more control if you do the, um, if you do your clear wax first. Okay, so we're almost, almost got the clear wax completely on. Um, so you can see how fast that goes. And like I said, the only area that is going to just be where I've got to get my cheesecloth uh, wad it up just right, okay? And then I can shove it in that little re-stressed groove that is all the way around the drawer. And again, I mean, look how quick that went. So the wax brings out the depth of the color again, and um, it will also, again, dry back down a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm gonna try the black wax. And again, I like to use the cheesecloth. We're just going to find a little bit of a clean section here. Um, I do like putting it on the plate because that way I can kind of work it into uh, my cheesecloth first because the black wax, I don't want it to go get too dark or too heavy. Um, but you can see how that's changing the look and also how I'm able to highlight a lot of the texture and the design. So this is going to be really cool. Um, look in the end, okay? And also the black wax is going to tie in um, all being the rest that I painted the whole rest of the piece black, okay? So once we're done with our waxing, 
then I'm going to show you guys these cute little casters that I found and um, we're going to put those on the bottom so that this will be a functional drawer that will roll in and out from underneath um, the bed. So that's the plan here. Okay, we're just about done with the wax. Oh, I think that has just added such character, okay? Because like I said, the black is just kind of getting caught in all the texture, and it's even bringing out some of the texture from the application uh, with the texture medium um, that we applied, because I applied it by chip brush, okay? So some of that texture is also coming alive. And then you can always come back and critique and decide if you want to get darker somewhere. Um, you can always come back and add more. Uh, but I think that really brought the whole piece back alive, okay? So um, I'm gonna get this thing flipped over and I'm gonna show you how to put on the casters. So we're at the final stage of putting this drawer together. We just need to give it some wheels, okay? So I had some scrap wood that I cut into these little corners or these little squares, I should say. And I just grabbed whatever glue I had around here. This is fast grab tacky glue. I'm telling you, it really does work great. So I'm just gonna put some glue, if I can get this to work, okay, oh, there we go, onto the bottom of these and stick them in each one of the corners because this is gonna give us um, something to screw the casters into, okay? The bottom of this drawer is just um, a really thin piece of wood, so I didn't want to drill into that. Um, so this is going to give us um, a little platform, okay, to screw each caster onto. And let's just get all four of these glued in. Um, and then I'm going to show you these cute little casters. Okay, we're, boy, we're at the end of this, I think. Or it's just gotten real stiff. But the stuff works great. Okay, so the last thing is these little casters that I found. And I did buy the smallest ones I could possibly find because I wasn't wanting the profile of the drawer to get much taller, okay? Because it has to fit underneath the bed or that's my plan for it, okay? Um, but now all we have to do is screw these on and then we'll show you guys the finished product. So the project is complete and ready to make its way home. Um, thank you so much for joining me. All I did is some finishing touches was um, attach the casters to the bottom. So now it rolls everywhere and then added a couple of clear knobs so that we can pull it out. Thanks again for joining me. Bye now.